beautiful. The Dark Zone Nexus Pro X? Mighty Actual X! Yeah, no, it's seriously called the Nexus Pro X! Did Dan Kuruto make this thing? The Nexus Pro X is a $50 blaster exclusive to Walmart. And I have this one a little bit early thanks to special friend of the channel, Abquintic, who found it online, bought it, and shipped me one before I was even awake to realize what they had done. It also advertises up to a 200 foot range. We did it, boys! 200 foot range blasters on store shelves? Are you freaking kidding me? But Dark Zone's also had a bit of problems with quality control and questionable design decisions recently with some of their previous blasters. So I really hope the Nexus Pro X is a complete win. But can it fight up against the Pro Series X Shot Long Shot? Oh, 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 this design? Ah, don't worry too much about this design, but if you want to win one of these things, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that like button, because if this video hits an arbitrary amount of likes, I'm going to give this thing away in a future video. Our scope, our Nexus Pro X itself, our stock, one mag, two mag, most of the blaster goodies. But I should reiterate, Dart Zone didn't send me this blaster. This was paid for with a Quintic's own money. We've got a mag release up here, which is your standard paddle, but we've also got another mag release at the back, which this one you pull backwards, so it's right below the trigger, which is very interesting. And as you can see, it wiggles that tusk up in the front, which means these are linked together. So you have two options and it's way better than having the multiple trigger set up Dart Zone normally does. You got a crossbar safety right here, which prevents the trigger from moving backwards. You got a pretty standard Dart Zone trigger. It just slides back, not the best. You got a grip right here, and this is a replaceable Airsoft AEG AR-15 style grip, believe it or not. This is one that you can actually add different grips onto, and it's a... Uh, it is really comfortable. That is, that is really good for a $50 blaster. The stock doesn't really sit in place when you pull it out, but it is. Eh, you can kind of hammer it to get that to fold in, but it's not going to fold in with your normal use. But of course, any buffer tube stock will fit on this blaster. Full length Picatinny rail up at the top. It doesn't have that weird slope that the original Nexus Pro does. It's just all flat, which is great because you used to have to buy a piece in order to do that. You've got Picatinny rails right here that are actually M-Lock compatible. If you were to remove them, there's actually M-Lock slots underneath that, which is really cool. Just another way of holding attachments on your blaster. You've got your priming grip down here, which does have Picatinny under the grip. So you can use whatever foregrip you want to prime the blaster, but it does come with this one and a priming test with whatever spring is in the blaster they say it hits up to 200 fps okay uh that is that is really smooth what's the seal like Flawless. Now I've actually had a pair of these for a couple of weeks now because Dart Zone does sell these separately on their website if you just want the B car and the P car. But being $20, this is one of the cheapest B cars you can get your hands on. And it comes with this, which is a clone of the worker P car that we've had for years and works really well. So I'm kind of hoping this is a good part, but these go in both types of standard scar barrel attachable blasters. So in this blaster specifically, you're supposed to put it in kind of opposite how you normally put a scar muzzle on. And then you can take this out and this little slot up here will actually hold this piece, which is nuts. And that's why it looks like it has two barrels. And the B car will go in like that and we're ready to go. And then if you want to use either of these parts on another standard barrel, you just put it on how you'd expect over a standard flare piece right there, or take this part out of your B car and put that on pretty much any standard aftermarket Nerf barrel. And that's what this little piece is for. This mounts on a Picatinny rail. It can be any Picatinny rail. And this will actually hold your B car or P car wherever you want. If you don't want to use this portion up here or you want to store both of them, which is kind of cool to have the option, I guess. Got our front sight here. It's the same one we've kind of been getting forever from them. Our scope is just a piece of plastic with a reticle in it. There's no adjustments. Uh, your mileage is definitely gonna vary. For something that is so accurate, I'm surprised they gave such a basic rudimentary sight option that I hope works a little bit well. Our stock actually detaches like that and there's a space in here 
to just store your tactical M&Ms, I guess. Uh, put our O-ring in there in case we d damage our O-ring somehow. Kind of cool. And our 12 round mags, which are very stout. No longer do we have the notches or anything that prevent these magazines from being used with other blasters. This is straight up a towel magazine. It should work with practically everything. And do we have to prime the blaster to insert the mag? No. And does the mag freely drop out? Yes. The blaster does come in this really nice purple package and it does have this really cool painted with also texturing aesthetic all over it, much like how the Nexus Pro came with that camo Raptor. So this is the same stuff. This like carbon fiber, it is textured. I'm guessing it's just textured paint, but this all feels and looks really premium. And the blaster, yeah, it's got a little bit of flex on it, which is a shame, but that prime is so smooth. Although you can't deprime the blaster, you do actually have to dry fire the thing, which I'm sure it's meant for it but that's scary. It does come with enough darts to fill both 12 round magazines. Wow, that's a, that's a really nice magazine insert. All right, normal shot. Oh yeah, it blows holes through it. Of course it does, which means it's gonna be hitting more than 170 FPS. Hold down the trigger and... <laughs> it's very smooth and very slam fireable. For those of you that don't put any stock in slam fire, this will probably change your mind. This is really light and smooth. Even comparing it to something like the Tryon, which did hit 200 FPS and does have slam fire, at whatever spring this one has in it to start with, it is way lighter and smoother to prime. But now enough talk, let's take it over to Freddy to see how hard it's hitting, and then of course put it against our digital range so we can see exactly how accurate this thing is. But right now it is a 10 out of 10. <laughs> oh, some people are gonna really like that. Shooting the Nexus Pro X over Freddy by Chronograph without any of the muzzle stabilization devices attached, we got an average of over 200 feet per second with a high of 207.8. Putting the plastic scar on did drop the velocity seemingly a little bit, but we're still comfortably hitting in the mid 190s. The bearing muzzle did have some weird outliers twice at over 230, but otherwise the numbers were similar to without it. It definitely seems like the bearing option is way more reliable. All right, first things first, I'm gonna take a crack at the e-shooter physical targets because those things are tiny and I wanna see if this scope thing even works. Ooh, maybe not. Huh. Yeah, that, that doesn't really work at all. Uh, I guess we'll have to try to find an optic for it. All right, got my knockoff Trigicon SRS here. Let's see if, I mean, it's not sighted in, but. Let me try the target. I want to see if this thing is actively hitting where it should. So I'm going to put the dot on the target in the very center. And I'm not going to change my point of aim. Holy crap. Okay. All right, it's just shooting extremely high. Okay, maybe that's a little bit better. Oh yeah. All right, it seems like it's hitting a little bit up into the right, but we can deal with that. All right, no more practice. Ninety three. Same exact test again, but I'm going to do it with the P car to see if that changes the point of impact at all.
92. It felt just as accurate. That's really good. Let's go find the original Nexus Pro really quick so you can see how much of a difference that is. Oh, I already don't miss this thing. It was a good blaster at the time because it was the only one at the time, but now it's crunchy and disgusting to use. Oh, this already feels wrong. That dot never left the center of the screen. So, so even though the projectile is moving really fast, it is horribly inaccurate. That's why a B car or a P car is so important to have on your blaster. I only see it on the stock, but there is a threaded insert located right here and on the other side of the blaster where you can put in a sling swivel, which is a really cool addition you wouldn't expect to find on a $50 blaster. There's also just like on the Nexus Pro, this cap right here on the buffer tube. And that is in fact held in by a single screw, which takes less than a second to remove. Give it a twist and you can swap out the entire spring. And the spring that is in this blaster from default is so ridiculously strong, you will be hard pressed to find a replacement, I think. But once that screw is removed, you really don't have to have it again because there is locking lugs on this piece and it's gonna be covered by your stock. so. That's a really quick and easy way to downgrade the spring if you happen to have a loose, thin spring, like kind of what you'd find with the original Nexus Pro, but more likely things like the Harrier or the Seagull. And from here, I really want to try to configure this blaster to be a bit more comfortable. So buffer tube stock right there. Looks cooler and is a lot more comfortable. Next up, this priming grip, it's pretty comfortable. There's a lot of different ways that you can hold it and I have no problems with it whatsoever other than it being a little bit loose and I can't tell if that's the priming grip itself or the rail it's attached to. But seeing as that's a Picatinny rail underneath of it, pull that off, there is a roller that's located on the grip so it's a little bit smoother. It wiggles a little bit, but it doesn't seem to wiggle that much. I'm gonna replace it with this, which is kind of a better version of the one that came with the Tryon. I happen to like this a lot, so. That's way more comfortable for me. And uh, yeah, those, those don't work. I could be using them wrong, I'll admit that, but I, for a blaster that is so important for accuracy, I'm surprised they gave you such terrible sights. And even though this blaster is capable of some pretty astounding ranges, we're gonna put a more mid-range sight on this. Not as open as some others with no magnification, but way easier to pick up your targets if you're actually shouldering and aiming with your blaster. Most of the time you probably won't, but now you have the option. We're good to go. And I did sit there for quite some time and dry fire this thing and haven't had a single issue so far in a few hundred primes, so it should be okay, but I'll let you know. I'll update the description stuff if that ever changes. Uh, this blaster is unbelievable, especially for what you get for $50. This is not the fit and finish is what you get with like a worker harrier or a seagull or something like that. It is still a budget option. And for a budget option, I feel like this is absolutely the best you can do right now. But unlike a lot of other options from Dart Zone, this one seems a lot more fleshed out. If this is their basis going forward, I have no qualms about calling Dart Zone back into their absolute top tier performance for price bracket. If you've been a little disappointed about Dart Zone releases in the past, I feel ya, and this should hopefully kind of show you that Dart Zone really can make it a fantastic blaster for an amazing price. I, the the, the kind of tart, the dumb thing is that this will absolutely dump on things like the Dart Zone Pro Mark 1.2. In fact, at this point, I don't know if they should make the Pro line anymore because I would never use a Pro Mark 0.2 or 1.1 or a Dart Zone Pro over this blaster at any point. It is that good, or maybe you could say that their Pro releases are just kind of that bad, but this height over bore is flywheeler territory. And for a precision springer, that's a, it's not unusable. It's just really not great in my opinion. And I, I don't like that. 
I don't, I don't like that at all. But those are kind of just nitpicks at this point, right? I mean, no blaster is truly perfect, but this thing is still, quite frankly, for lack of a better word, unbelievable. Dark Zone is back! baby, and I was not paid to say that. They didn't even bother to email me and ask me if I wanted a sample. I, this was sent to me by a friend because they knew I'd want to do a video on it. Could you use this thing at a competitive 5v5 if you can get that FPS a little bit higher, even though 200 is usually the cap for springers like this, and this hits comfortably around 200 FPS? Totally. You absolutely would not struggle with this blaster. In every way, a pump-action magazine-fed primary springer needs to be good, the Nexus Pro X is good. If you already have a Harrier, a Seagull, stuff like that, then no, you do not need a Pro X. It is not going to unequivocally change the game for you. But if you have an older option or even one of Dart Zone's other options, the Striker Max, the Nexus Pro, the Tomcat, the Dictator, the Conquest, and so forth, yeah, even if you have an X-Shot long shot, this is a blaster really worth getting. While there are going to be a couple of people out there that don't need a blaster like the Nexus Pro X, in my opinion, it's still the blaster for everybody. If you have a maxed out Harrier and I handed you this blaster, you would still feel pretty good about using this thing on the field. Looks like Dart Zone leveled up and will clear this game with no continues.